Brothers and sisters, welcome to our tonight uh, Bible study. And today uh, we are checking on um, quite a number of things here which have been um, uh, close to my heart. And I've been asking myself, why is it that uh, people waste a lot of time in things which are unnecessary, especially when we come to movies, uh, we come to music, we come to news, and things like that. Now, have you ever asked yourself, how comes, what is really wrong with me, and all the time I just enjoy checking things and enjoy uh, the worldly films and worldly things which are really confusing me. And most of them, they make people be so much scared and every time you, it's, it's like Satan is selling his agenda all through and through. And people are out there, they're shouting and they're saying, wow, wow, you know, and all those kind of things. And today I thought of addressing this as a Bible study so that we can be able to do what is right and we be able to go with the rapture because Satan is consuming a lot of time with these fairy tales that is every time and uh, and and most of the movies have you realized we came from a, a one hour kind of movie to one and a half hours to two and a half hours now we have series and people can sit down watching a whole series and you ask yourself, when do they get time to read the Bible? When do they get time to do different things which we are supposed to be doing? Satan is very cunning and uses this time to confuse people so that they cannot do what they are supposed to be doing. This is very serious what I'm going to speak about today. And if you stay with me, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn absolutely so much. Now, let's start by checking. What does Paul tell us concerning different things? What does Paul tell us? Now, let me just read for you and, and give you... Uh, uh, what, what, the kind of point which I want you to understand here. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 6, 12, he says, all things are lawful unto me. Everything is lawful, okay? But all things are not expedient. All things are lawful to me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Right now, Watching these things, it doesn't mean that if you watch all these movies and musics and all these things, if you're a true Christian, you'll go to hell. No, you will not go to hell because you are no longer under the law. You are under the grace. You are under the grace. God has already purchased you with his price and you can't lose your salvation. So everything is lawful to you. But not all things are expedient. Not all things are lawful for you. You're not supposed to do this because you know you have the, the liberty. Don't be put under the power of any. Are you under the power of some spell of, of these movies and music and news that people are always watching every day? Most of the time, when you look at secular contents, they have no value of anything. It's when you check at the, at the movies that we watch, it's all about war sex and drugs nothing else it's all about war drugs people fighting killing each other you know these are the things that people feed themselves on every day and uh, every day you you, you know I, I will tell you why it's very important to keep yourselves pure from what you watch because most of these things what they they do is that they they slowly and slowly depress you and they keep on showing you that uh, God is not in control, that Satan is the one in control, that everything that you're doing, there's someone who is much more bigger, who is Satan, who is doing, is the Lord of War. You, look, look at the titles of most of these videos that people are watching. Just look. You will see there's nothing else apart from just war, violence, drugs, immorality and all those kind of things that's the only thing you'll see and even if you come to music look at music what do you see there's nothing good do you think all these things are glorifying god all these kind of things do you think this kind of music glorifies god if, even at one inch and there are christians out there who will say i want to watch i want to enjoy come on it's, it's just i can't lose my salvation fine but not everything is lawful to you to watch. 
It's not lawful for you to watch. Paul tells us that. And he tells us to be, to make sure that everything that we do gives God glory. Do you, does everything that you do give God the glory? Let me show you. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. What does Paul tell us about the things that we, we watch? Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. Do to the glory of God. Do all these things that you are seeing here, do they give God glory? Do those things give God glory? They don't. And if you put them on your eyes and you keep on watching, I'm going to tell you what really happens to you as a Christian, to you as a believer, and even to the other people who are lost out there. When you keep on watching these things, let me show you. Satan is very cunning. And that's why Hollywood is based on Satan. Satan is a, is a you know, he makes the rules there. And that's why you see most of these actors and actresses, most of them, they die of depression. And others, they are dying of drug abuse and things like that. And uh, you ask yourself, what really happened? That was a big star. Have you heard about many, many big stars and, and you just hear about their stories and you're like, what happened to these people? What really happened? Let me show you one of them. Have you heard about this guy called Avinci? What happened? This guy, he killed himself at the age of what? At a very young age. 8 September 1989 to 20th April 2018. This guy... He killed himself. Why would people like this be killing themselves? Why would they be killing themselves? And not only him alone, there are so many, so many, so many. I just don't want to take time on that. But is all these things that you're watching and enjoying giving glory to God? Or are you glorifying the works of Satan? Because Satan, I'm going to show you, if you keep on watching these things, if you keep on praising Satan with all these things, there's something that I'm going to show you. If you stay there, you're going to be enlightened in a very different way. Have you ever asked yourself and wondered, how comes immediately, immediately after you watch a thriller or a, a horror movie, all of a sudden you're in a bad mood? Have you ever asked yourself, have you ever watched a thriller movie and all of a sudden you're in a bad mood and you feel as if it's, it's like your world is falling apart. You're so much scared and you feel, you know, why did I even watch it in the first place? Do you know what really happens? Do you know why you feel bad after watching these kind of things? Because the Bible tells us something here in Matthew in Matthew 6, from verse 22, the Bible tells us something here. It says that the light of the body is the eye. The eye. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. And if therefore the light that is in thee shall be darkness how great is thy darkness no man can serve two masters you can say i'm serving god and i'm also serving satan i'm checking evil things and i'm also checking godly things for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise the other you cannot serve god and mammon you have to choose and that's why satan all the time is is always trying to tell people have you seen Satan trying to show so many movies concerning the eye? Why, does, why is he concentrating about the eyes? If you go on Netflix, you will see so many movies about the eye, the eye, the eye. And we're always hearing about, uh, you know, the third eye, Satan. Uh, you know, all these Satanists, they're, they're trying to do the signs of the, you know, the one eye thing, the one eye thing. And you ask yourself, why eyes? Because Satan knows very well. That the eye, the eye brings in light to the body. So if you're watching evil things, then what are you giving unto you? Darkness. You're giving yourself darkness. And darkness is everything else, is all these things that you're seeing. 
They are making you feel evil. You feel as if it's... it's it, why, why, why do you think when people listen to some weird kind of music, you feel the rhythm is moving in you? You feel that kind of dance, you want to dance like that? If you have listened to some love songs, you feel all of a sudden in a, in a mood of love. If you have listened to some... Um, Rock and roll, you feel all of a sudden you're like a bad boy, bad girl. It, they, there's some spiritual things in the things that you watch. If you watch kind of immoral videos, there's something which happens also. You feel immoral within yourself. Let me show you what Jesus said. Jesus said something here. Matthew 5, 28. What did Jesus say? Jesus said, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Now, see what Jesus is saying. If you look on a woman to lust after her, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart. Why is Jesus saying this? Why is he talking about this? He's saying, if you want to follow me, follow me wholeheartedly. And don't be deceived by the enemy to keep on enjoying all these things which have been set forth for you by Satan. Because all he wants to do is to steal you. He wants to steal you. He wants to steal you. And let's continue. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not that the whole body should be cast into hell. Why is Jesus talking about pluck your eye? He didn't literally mean pluck your eye at this time. Of course, you're living at a time of grace. But what he meant is that if the things that you're watching are pulling you away from him, you better destroy them or give them away. If you, the things that you're watching, they're destroying you, and you feel for sure these things are pulling me back from Christ, you rather stop watching. You rather stay away from them. Because God is not happy when you do these things. He's not happy when you watch these things. Because the eye is very important. The eye is very, very important. And that's why Satan is all after opening up your eyes to make sure that you see his filth. He wants to make sure that you see his filth. That is the reason why he's pushing these agendas. And that's why if you check in most homes, if there is something which is really becoming cheaper and cheaper, is the TV sets and the radio. While everything else is going expensive, TV sets, radio, mobile phones, all those things are becoming cheaper and cheaper to get. Why? Not food, not other things. Because Satan wants to indoctrinate you. He wants you to keep on seeing his propagandas. And his ideas, he wants you to keep on checking. Because if you don't have these things, you don't have TVs, you don't have that, then uh, he will not pass his agenda very well. And that's why even the guy who, um, the person who uh, discovered electricity, you know, he said that uh, he was just standing somewhere and then he was struck by lightning. <laughs> Do you even remember what the Bible says about lightning? I saw Satan fall from heaven like... Who? Luke 10. I think it's 1080. Uh, 1008 maybe. I don't know. Is it 1080 or 1008? Something like that. Uh, I think it's Luke 10. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just uh, write it here. Look at this. Uh, I, I have to show you this. Uh, I don't know, I'm not seeing this one. But th th there's the Bible verse which says, I saw Satan as a... Uh, I got to show this. I saw Satan fall like lightning. This is the, yes, Luke 10, 18. This is what I'm looking for. Luke 10, 18. 10, 18. 
the person who discovered electricity he says that uh, he was struck by lightning and if he was struck by lightning do you think god is going uh, striking people as lightning and i don't know what just go and check his story i i don't remember the name of the guy but just go and see whoever discovered electricity now from that you can just see who would be striking people most probably satan and most of these technologies if you hear most of the people talking about these things they are saying that uh, technology many of the uh, people who you hear they have been satanists before and things like that they will always say that uh, most of these technologies are certain bound and that's why satan will bind people with facebook with youtube with different things and and he binds them with news and binds them with so many things because he wants them to be lost he wants them to be indoctrinated by all these things he wants you to be like the people of the world look at this when you look at world news is there anything interesting with news today nowadays is there anything interesting with news when you look at you just google world news Everything that you see is all about war and the rumors of wars and the people killing each other and people hating each other. You know, there's nothing about... I just googled world news latest. Tell me here if there's any positive news here. It's all about war and war and war and people killing each other and people doing wrong things to each other. Is this what people are enjoying? For me, I usually say, if uh, it's all about checking what is happening just just probably if it's so big you will know it probably you will hear from a friend or something like that or if it's something that is really really mandatory for you to hear they will announce to you in a different way and tell you hey guys you have to check this and uh, that, that, that's how i do it personally i rarely watch news because it's full of violence it's full of nothing it's full of uh, lies when you look at these people it's pure lies what they are telling you there's nothing Total lies. Bunch of lies. Let's continue. Now, why do you think we have eyes and ears? Why do we have eyes? You know, somebody can say, Keith, you're, you're saying uh, eyes, eyes, come on, all those things. But, uh, you know, we have eyes so that we can see these things. No. Let me show you. Let me show you something here. Proverbs. Proverbs 20. 12. The Bible tells us why we have eyes. The hearing ear and the seeing, uh, and the seeing eye. The Lord has made even both of them. God has made these eyes for a reason. He has made ears for a reason. Now, going straight to understand, what does God want us to hear? What is it exactly that God wants us to hear? He wants us to hear the gospel so that we can be saved. That's, that's the whole duty of why God is pushing so much. He wants you to hear something. He wants you to hear the gospel. And he wants us to see. What are we supposed to see? To see the times of the end are coming. To discern the times using our eyes. We can see the Bible. We can check the Bible. What does the Bible say? It says that the mark of the beast is about to come. And we see. And we see. And we are able to calculate. And see that, oops. These people are almost creating the mark of the beast. We are hearing that you can do this without this. You can do this without this. And the Bible tells us in Revelation that he causes all. Both all. Uh, both, uh, you know, rich and poor free and bond to receive a mark that whosoever will not have that mark he'll not be able to buy and sell and we look and we see with ourselves and we can tell wow these are the end times this is the reason why god gave us eyes and also to see of course the beauty of what he has created we look at the mountains we look at the the, the rivers and the things and we can be able to say wow this is god and god should be worshipped because He's created all these things. Our eyes are to see the wonderful works of God. 
and our ears are to hear the gospel and hear what God is telling us through his prophets, his uh, pastors, his different people, and what God is trying to speak. And also to hear the voice of our friends and our family members and share stories and we listen. Though that is the work of the ears. Not to hear a bunch of lies, listening a bunch of lies. No, that's not why we have ears. That's not why we have ears. Do you understand something else? That uh, this secular movies, of course films, uh, films, movies, uh, uh, music and news, all that they do to us is to make us feel so low about ourselves and we keep on thinking, I wish I was like so and so. I wish I was like that celebrity. I wish I was like that, you know, that movie icon. I wish like I was a... Uh, have, have you... <laughs> Let me show you. Celebrities. How many times people glorify these people? You look at them and you say, wow, I want to be like this. I've seen so many people who want to be like um, Kim Kardashian. Others want to be like Beyonce. Others, they're changing themselves and they're, you know, they're glorifying these beings. Instead of glorifying the creator, you glorify the creation. Instead of you sitting down and telling God, I want to be as you. Paul tells us, follow me for I'm also following Christ. Paul tells us, don't follow anything else. Follow me as I'm also following Christ. And he was not saying, follow me as a man. He's saying, follow my doctrine. What Jesus gave me, the gospel. Jesus is the one who gave me the gospel. So follow the gospel. Follow the way I walk and I do things tirelessly for the sake of God. I'm, I'm, stop following people. People looking after celebrities as if they are some gods of something. Let me show you what the Bible says about this. What does the Bible say about this? Proverbs 21.4. Proverbs 21.4. What does the Bible say about these things? A high look, a proud heart, the plowing of the wicked is sin. If you have a high look, what is a high look? You're looking at things in a, in a, you know, you're exalting things which are not supposed to be exalted. And you have a proud heart. Do you know movies, sometimes they make people have a very proud heart? Because I saw that celebrity doing a, a certain thing. I want to be like him. The way, I remember when we were kids, I, we would watch uh, uh, movies by Bruce Lee and... Um, uh, the Texas Ranger and uh, you know we, we start fighting in the bushes out there and we want to be like them we want to be proud and say you see I can fight you you see I can beat you you see I can do this why because of this a proud heart comes from what you look what you feed yourself is exactly what is going to be in your heart the plowing of the wicked you're plowing them you are like glorifying the wicked that is sin according to God. If you glorify the wicked, then that is sin. That is sin. That's exactly what God is saying. The Bible tells us that we should hate what unbelievers do and have no part in them. We should take no part in the things of the unbelievers. What they are doing, what they are showing people. It's all about showing people Things that you cannot even explain. They are changing. A man is becoming a woman. A woman is becoming a man. And, and the things that they are teaching people in their movies, in their music. Have you seen these people? And you ask yourself, what is really wrong with the world? What is wrong with the world? David said something. David said this in Psalms. Psalms 101. From verse 3. David said this concerning his eyes. Alright. He said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. Nothing which is wicked before my eyes. I hate the work of them that, that turn aside. 
It shall not cleave to me. It shall not hang to me. I will not put anything in consideration which does not make sense concerning the word of God. Anything which is wicked, I will not put it before my eyes. How many things do you put before your eyes every day? How many things? How many things? How many movies do you set before your eyes and they're wicked? Do you know you're not walking in the way of righteousness? You're not walking in the spirit? The spirit tells you, walk with me and do what is right. But people are rushing to watch these kind of things. The Bible tells us that we should pray to God that he opens our eyes to what is good. And what is good is the law of God. He tells us, pray that God opens up your eyes to what is good. Let me show you Psalms 119, 18. What does the Bible say? Open thou mine eyes. This is David saying, God, please, open thou mine eyes, that I may behold wondrous things of thy law, that I may understand the things of your law. The law of God says good things. The, it's all about love your neighbor and love God with all your heart. And he says, please, God, open my eyes to what is right only. I want to know your law only. Because the moment you're opening your eyes to these things, to the things of the world, you're pushing your life to the things of the world, then you're becoming blind to the things of God. And that's why Paul, I mean, uh, uh, um, David says, I am a stranger in this earth. Hide not thy commandments from me. I don't want your commandments to be hidden from me because the moment I'm, I'm watching different things, my eyes, the eyes of the spirits, they close because I cannot understand. And David says, God, open my eyes so that I can see the things of your law that I may follow you only. Do you know there's someone in the Bible who made a covenant with his eyes? And he said, I don't, I, I've made a covenant with my eyes. I don't want to see wrong things. My eyes, listen, I've made a covenant with you. I'm not going to put my eyes on evil things. This guy is called Job. Let me show you Job 31 from verse 1. See what Job said. I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? A maid is a, a worker or a, a young lady or basically meaning, why should I stray from what is right? Why should I stray? I already made a covenant with my eyes. Have you made a covenant with your eyes? Have you made a covenant with your eyes? Or are your eyes looking on what is wrong all the time have you made a covenant with your eyes that they should not look on what is filthy they should only look on what is right have you made a covenant with your eyes you know there are, there are people who say i know myself you know i can make it you know uh, I'm, I'm, I'm very, you know, I'm smart. I understand myself. You know, I've been saved by grace. Yes, you've been saved by grace. I don't deny that one. You cannot go to hell if you're already saved. You can't. But there are people out there who say, uh, you see, uh, I can handle this. I'm a serious Christian. I can watch, you know, dirty stuff. I can, I can do all those kind of things. Uh, I can watch all those kind of things. I can do whatever. But because, you know, I can handle it. I can discern it. Unless you, you're doing something like which I'm doing here to highlight to people these things are wrong, stay away from them. Because the Bible tells us one thing. For those who think that they can handle these things, 1 Corinthians 10, 12, if you think you can handle this, you can handle the worldly things, see what Paul is telling you. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth, take heed, lest he fall. If you think you're standing, take heed, because you may be falling. Take heed that you fall. 
it's very possible for you to fall. There has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But I will be, but with, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. You see, there are people who say, I just, I just do whatever, you know, I, it doesn't matter, I, I will handle it. I'll check whatever uh, it's out there, you know, I'll handle it. But the Bible tells you, take heed that you fall. Now, this is not the falling from salvation. This is falling into devil's hands. Do you know Satan, he wants you dead? Even if you're a Christian, he wants you dead? What would be the reason why Satan would want you dead? And he knows that you will go to heaven. What will be the reason? What will be the reason? Because when Satan... He will tempt you into these things. He'll tempt you to, into watching this dirty music, into watching these movies of violence and drugs. You probably might, you know, by, might be intrigued by some of these uh, 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 films and you beat someone, you kill someone or something happens or you get into immorality or other things. And what happens? If you get sick, you're going to die. So when you die, he knows that that is one servant of God who has gotten lost. So he will not be able to preach the gospel. Satan wants the Christians to get away from here so that they don't preach the gospel to others, to enlighten others. If I'm not here, I will not preach the gospel to you. If I'm not here, I'll not tell you the truth. If another brother, another sister is not here, they'll not tell you the truth. Yes, you can lose your salvation, but... When you continue doing what is wrong, then you'll be, you know, you'll have given yourself to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. Let me show you. Let me show you a good example. Let me show you a good example. You may say, Keith, you're, you're speaking on things. Let me show you why if you continue doing wrong things, going against the law of God, you'd be like this person here. Now, look at this. Paul is writing this letter to the church of Corinthians, the Corinth. And in their church, this message is writing to Christians, to born-again believers. But then he's telling them something here, that there's someone here who is doing wrong things and is a believer. And is giving even the fate of what is going to happen to that believer. See what the, uh, the Bible says through Paul here. It is reported commonly that there is fornication among you. These are believers, eh? And such fornication is not so much as named among the Gentiles. You are doing so evil things, even more than the unsaved, unbelievers, the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife. This is a believer who is having his father's wife. Incest. And you are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that has done this deed might be taken away from among you. You people of the church, you have not even mourned that this person who is doing these things. This believer can be taken away from you so that he doesn't, you know, uh, uh, spoil the testimony of Christ. Now, Paul is giving his part verdict here. He's saying, for I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already, as though I were present concerning him that has done this deed. Now, he has already made his judgment. This is the judgment. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together and, uh, and my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, to deliver such one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. Yes, the spirit of this person will be saved. He will go to heaven. That's, that's okay. But this person, he'll, deliver, he'll be delivered to Satan to destroy the flesh. If you go and you say, I'm a believer now, I'll go and rob a bank. Do you think Jesus is going to take the bullets? No, your body will die. You will be killed and you will die. Yes, you'll go to heaven. But now, where is the testimony? Where is the testimony? Will you, ever, will you be able to preach to people when you're in, in a casket? That's why Satan is pumping these things. So that even the believers who are unaware, who are not awake, they'll be carried out by these things. And they will forget the Lord who saved them. 
They will go on these things and do what is wrong and they forget the God who saved them. This is why we need to open up our eyes and be wise and not be like the world. Do not conform to the patterns of this world. Do not be like the world. But be ye transformed by the renewal of your mind. Are you being transformed or are you still living like these people? Are you still living like these people? Now something else, you may say, okay, that's movies, that's music. What about news? What about news? What about news? Is it really bad to watch news? Keith, come on. Come on. Why would you be talking about news? Is, is it bad to watch news? Now let me tell you something. There are so many people who waste a lot of time looking for news and spreading superstitions and propaganda and lies. Most of these news, they are just propagandas from people. Somebody wakes up in the morning. He just hears a story from his wife and he goes and makes a story and makes some news. And now everybody's communicating, hey, did you hear that? Did you hear this? Did you see that? And this is ex ex well explained by Paul. Paul he explains and he gives an example of the people in Athens, in Greece, what they used to do the whole day. Listen to what they used to do. In the book of Acts 17, Verses 21. Look at the people of Athens. What they used to do every day. See. For all the Athenians and strangers. Which were there. Spend their time in nothing else. These people they spend their time in nothing else. But either to tell. Or to hear some new thing. Some news. These people instead of doing what is right. All they spend their time is in nothing. Nothing else but only to tell or to hear some new thing. And that's why even when Paul came and he was preaching to them gospel, they were there and they, they were saying, okay, there, there's some guy called Paul here. Come and tell us the news. And the moment they started hearing, oh, it's about Jesus died for you, they, they started moving. They did not even want to listen. They ran. <laughs> I saw this and I was like, what? You see what Paul is saying? For... For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God. You see, they were always like, they want something new. There's another new God there. Even when Paul was coming to preach to them, they were thinking he's bringing another new God. So that they can add on top of their gods. Look just behind here. On verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mass Hill and said, You men of Athens. I perceive that in all things, you are too superstitious. You're just sitting down, making noise and gossiping, and saying nothing, just waiting for news, news, news. What has happened? Uh -huh. What did that guy do? Did you hear that celebrity? What did you do? Eh? Did you hear that uh, politician? Did you watch that scandal? Yeah? Huh? There's this guy who had a scandal. Did you see the scandal of, uh, you know, uh, Megan and who and who? Oh, I don't know what this guy is called, eh? Did you hear those scandals? Did you hear this other guy, what he was doing? Did you hear this person? They're just sitting down and waiting for news, scandals, and stories. This is exactly how they were. There's nothing new under the sun. What was happening back then will also happen even now. And he's telling you, you people, you're too superstitious. You just want to listen and listen and listen and hear this person say that and the other one say that. And, 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 and now you may ask, there are many, many people who will ask. So Keith, you have talked about all these things that we stop watching the movies, the, the, you know, uh, all this kind of thing. If it's a Christian movie and it's just for a minute or two or something, yeah, uh, maybe once in a while it's okay you can watch if it's a christian something but if it's these evil things i can't endorse any personally i can't endorse any just watch what is christian and of course don't sit down on movies those are men's perception of something take your time and read the bible somebody can sit down for a whole hour a whole day reading a sci-fi book reading about uh, you know, Harry Potter, reading about this and that, and you cannot sit down 
and read the Bible. You're saying the Bible is too hard. You may say, okay, Keith, you don't want us to watch movies. You don't want us to watch, uh, you know, all this kind of music. You don't want us to, you know, watch all this news and all this kind of thing. So what shall we do? What shall we do? So what, what do you want us to do? What do you want us to do? I will not talk by myself. Let me use the scripture. This is what you need to do. In the book of Luke 11, Luke 11, 34, it tells us what we need to do. Listen, the light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, or is, or is, you know, is meaning when your eye is lit, the whole body also is full of light. If your eyes are full of light, they see what is godly, then your body will, will walk in godliness. But when your eye is evil, thy body also is full of darkness. Do you know why people fear in their houses? And they think that things are moving in their houses? It's because you're always watching dirty things. You're watching thrillers, you're watching this and that. And do you think after watching all those dark things, you will stay in, uh, uh, your body will be full of light? No. See what Jesus says. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. There are some people who think that they have light in them, but they have darkness because of the things that they feed themselves. If thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark, the whole shall be full of light. As when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. The Bible is very clear. Make sure that you take care of your eyes and what you see because the eyes are the windows to the, to the soul. And Satan wants to steal your soul if you're not a believer. If you're already a believer, what he wants to steal is your body. He wants to scare you and implant things into your mind and make you walk in the flesh instead of walking in, uh, in the spirit. And the end result is going to be what exactly I showed you in 1 Corinthians uh, 5 from verse 1. Whereby Satan will have your body delivered to him and he will finish you up and your testimony, your light will not shine anymore because you're dead. You will not be able to preach to anyone. That's exactly what he wants. Stay away from all these things. Now, how can you have light? How can you have the light? Where do we find the light? Where do you find the light? Let me show you something here. Listen to this. In John 8.12, John 8.12, Jesus said, Then he sparked Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Jesus said he is the light. So if you want to walk in light, follow Jesus. Stop following the world. Stop watching and running up and down with all these evil things. Follow Christ. He is the light of the world. So how are you going to follow Christ? How are you going to follow that light? It's because of one thing. The only way you can follow him is following where the cross is. That is by believing in what Jesus did for you. Salvation is the only way you can get light. And once you have that light of the gospel, you will be saved. And so once you're saved, what happens? The Holy Spirit will come inside you and he will guide you into all truth in doing what is right. That is if you're saved, uh, when you get saved. And for those who are saved, do not walk in the flesh. Walk in the Spirit of God, how the Spirit of God is directing you. Not walking in the ways of the flesh. But this one, let me just explain to those who are not saved. What is salvation? Salvation is basically understanding and believing in what Jesus did for you at the cross. What did Jesus do for you at the cross? The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel 
which I preached unto you, which you received, and wherein you stand. That's exactly what Paul tells us. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. Now when you believe how Christ died, and you see, you understand it. How did Jesus die? He died by shedding his blood at the cross. Why was the blood important? Because without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Why, why did people have to shed the blood? Why was blood important to be shed? So that there can be forgiveness of sins. Because in Leviticus 11, uh, 17, 11, it says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I've given you the, uh, the blood upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. So the only thing which can atone for the soul is the blood. Why, does the, why, why do we need to atone for the soul? Because we sinned and the Bible said that the wages of sin is death. And somebody had to die so that you can be forgiven or else you die for yourself. You have either you die for yourself, you say it, yourself you die. Or someone else dies. But Jesus, 2,000 years ago, he came and he paid it all. He died for our sins. He paid everything. There's nothing that you need to pay right now. It is finished. All that you need to do is believe that he died for your sins on the cross. That's the only way you can be saved. Brothers and sisters, believe that Jesus died for your sins. He was buried and rose again according to the scriptures. When you believe this, then you'll be saved. And there's nothing else that you'll need to do. And the Holy Spirit will come inside you and he will make you a new creature. A new creature. And your life will never be the same again. Hope this has been a blessing. You can uh, give this video a thumbs up. You can uh, like, you can share to other people. Let them know also. Let them hear the gospel. Those who are lost, please tell them. Let them hear. And also you can subscribe because uh, I always do uh, many, 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 many videos on different teachings every day. Every day. Please subscribe. You can keep on watching because let's, let's edify one another. Let's open up the eyes of one another and let Jesus take control. God bless you and have a blessed time.